I mean, they're just, they're so fun to make, to be honest. They're so challenging, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally. You really have to push yourself to the limits of what the human body can do sometimes. And it's such a rewarding feeling. Um, and I just find it fantastically entertaining to perform and also to watch. So it's kind of a win-win for me, really. So it's a direct prequel to the original Omen. Uh, we find our story somewhere around seven years before the original takes place. And uh, yeah, it just slots right on in there. And it tells you the story of what came before this movie that we all, all us horror fans, have grown to fear and love so much. Yeah, tough to do without spoilers. Well, I suppose we, everyone's seen that. Of course, we have the iconic It's All For You line performed brilliantly by Ishtakari Wilson, who gave her whole soul to this movie. Um, and we had, there's definitely a few more, some little Easter eggs in there that you've got to kind of uh, discover for yourself. But um, I think mostly it's like the way that Arkasha filmed this and shot this, it, it has such a nostalgic feel. And the energy of it, I feel, like, at least personally, and the tone of it feels like it's definitely echoes the original as best as you know we can do in, in, in these times. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think that hopefully it will, it will feel like it, it fits. Oh, wow. I mean, again, without giving spoilers, the, the creepiest part of this story is that, for me, that's actually a good question. I haven't been asked that what I personally find to be the creepiest. I think the fact that every, all of these people have this purpose for this one person, and this one person is completely unaware of it. And it's almost like you've, you've been farmed, like you've been cattled and, and, and raised for one specific reason. And to have your entire life be dictated by that. And your entire life has been dictated by something that you are completely unaware of. I think that's like very chilling and spine tingling and something that would scare me very much. Yeah, she is a young novitiate. She's coming to uh, become a nun in Rome, uh, all the way from Pittsfield, Massachusetts, under the guidance of uh, Bill Nye's character, Father Lawrence, who sort of like a father figure to her, very paternal energy from him towards her. And she's going to work at an orphanage there. Um, and it all seems quite lovely and picturesque and beautiful and emotional and sweet. Um, and then things start to take a turn for the worse quite quickly and everything kind of begins to crumble around her. Yeah, well, what I really love about this film is that I think that while it answers these big questions like that I had at a, as an Omen fan growing up, like where does Damien come from, you also get to, know, get to know a whole new set of characters that weren't in the original franchise, so you really get to discover this whole new world and um, and I like to think that we had our own message and our own voice with the first Omen, but something that fits within the franchise and still, like for fans, there's still going to be lots of fun Easter eggs and we do dovetail into the 1976 version in a really fun way. My approach to making things scary, I think, you know, I think nothing's scarier than real life, you know? And I think the realer something is, the more it's going to, infiltrate your mind, body, and soul, and the harder it's gonna to be to shake it. Because if something's very grounded, and you can find a lot of, of um, relatability in that, it's not going to stay in the theater for you. You know, when you leave the theater, all that horror is gonna stay. <laughs> Man, that sounds horrible, but, but that honestly is, I think, the best approach. And those are the movies that scare me the most, are the ones that are the most grounded. Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, there's a lot of characters that are beloved in the original, and it's really exciting to bring them back in the first Omen. And, you know, seeing Spoleto's face and seeing Gregory Peck's face again at the end of the film and Father Brennan is um, really fun. I was always curious as an Omen fan about who Father Brennan was and his character arc, and I think Ralph Innocent did such an amazing job um, with showing us that journey. And, um, you know, I was also really enthralled as a kid with the 666 mark. And so what was really fun on this project was getting to explore the mythology of the 666 even more. So. 
Yeah, it's it's hard to pin him down. I feel like every movie I've ever seen in my whole life is somehow popping up on screen, you know, consciously or not consciously. But, um, I mean, what we did look at a lot was um, the Ellen Pakula gordon Willis collaboration. So, like, one thing that was a huge visual reference but also a real character and pacing reference for us was Clute um, with uh, Jane Fonda. I think that film is so beautiful um, and also subverts your expectations of what you think a psychological thriller or a horror film would be because it focuses so much on character. Yeah, Margaret's so interesting. And, you know, when I first got the script um, and I read it, I was really surprised to find out that the lead was going to be this young novitiate. Um, and it was really inspiring finding, you know, discovering this character more and more because she's, you know, she grew up in an orphanage her entire life. And then immediately after aging out of the orphanage, she goes on to become a novitiate. So it's, she's a fairly isolated um, character that's then dropped in the middle of Rome, which is like a very, a very beautiful and sensual city and so for a girl who has maybe not thought about her body or or her sexuality um to be dropped into an atmosphere like that I think is already very confronting and already such an interesting film whether or not you have the supernatural element ahead of her um so I think that she she has this really incredible arc where we wanted her to go from heaven into hell in the course of this film and, you know, the first time you see her, she's rising up above into, into this beautiful golden light. And then we end with her surrounded by flames in this dungeon. And I think that seeing somebody um, learn how to trust their intuition and fend for themselves was such an exciting thing to photograph and to, to see. <laughs> <laughs>